In this video I will compare the quality and latency of Virtual Desktop on the Pico 4 to the quality and latency of the Pico Streaming Assistant, the built-in streaming assistant here of Pico and we are very excited how this will work out, so stay tuned. This is virtual desktop. This is my virtual environment where my virtual desktop is in front of me. And this is one of the Ryan environments uh, which you can choose from. So when you point your pointer here at the bottom below the screen, for example, my environment, then there's a little bar and there you can make some settings. And when I hit menu, I have all of the options I can set here with virtual desktop. In this tab environments I have chosen the gaming room here but you can choose from many environments here so it's very very nice. I have set everything to the highest possible setting here. I have set it to ultra this is the render resolution we will have a look at the render resolution in a minute then I have set to this uh, frame rate setting to 90 fps the bitrate to the highest here, 150 megabits per second. I've cranked up the sharpening to 100% to compensate the compression here with the Pico 4 on Virtual Desktop. And of course, we do not use the synchronous space warp option as we only want real frames, no interpolated frames between a real, real frame here. And I've enabled the sliced encoding to reduce the latency even more and disable the video buffering as my Wi-Fi is very straightforward to be honest so I don't want to buffer any frames here because it's it increases the latency. This is it. These are my virtual desktop settings and the next step is to switch to VR. This is important to mention. When I hit the graphics quality in virtual desktop to ultra the render resolution is at 3168 by 3168 pixels per eye. So this is a higher, f higher resolution than the display resolution of 2160 by 2163 frames in the display because we need some more pixels. We need lens buffer. When I move, there, there are pixels where already have been calculated and are in the background so I, I don't see any black borders here for example or I, we have a little um, distortion correction for example in other headsets. These are the reasons for this high resolution. The resolution is always higher so please keep that in mind. The resolution is always higher than the display resolution. If not, then there's something wrong in your setup and your settings here. So please keep that in mind. Now we're here in Beat Saber. I will start a song now to test the latency, to test the image quality. And I would suggest that I play Be There For You. I like this song on hard with a faster song option here as a mutator. And then I will tell you about the latency, the image quality and everything else I see here. Okay. Yes, it looks good. It looks good, it feels good. So when you are used to lighthouse tracking, of course you feel that it's not as responsive as with a lighthouse headset. A lighthouse headset is of course not wireless, so there's, uh, there's not as much of delay of course, but it's not a big delay, so don't get me wrong. But you can feel that it's different with the lighthouse, of course. But this is not related to virtual desktop here. When I play standalone Beat Saber, for example, my Quest 2, it does not feel like like lighthouse headsets, of course, even if it's not uh, streaming from my PC. Okay, and it looks good when I when I look to the to the end here of the track. Then I can see a little compression, of course, but it's not like, oh, what's this for a bad picture? So a very good job here, GigaDraw and Virtual Desktop. It looks great, it works great. The latency is good, it's good enough for me. Everything is great. And I would say that this is totally playable in a good way, totally. 
When you compare the picture, of course, the quality to other headsets which are connected directly natively to the PC, you can see differences in picture quality. You can. But when you just use it, don't think about it. And when you just say, yes, I want to play without a card, then this is a nice way and it's a great picture anyway. But not the best, the best of course. Just to mention it again, but it's great. Okay, not the worst run here. <laughs> not the worst run. Okay, this was nice. So this is my conclusion for Virtual Desktop here with Beat Saber. Latency was great. Image quality was also fine. I mean, when I look here, there's some fog here in the environment. There you can see the compression. This is the worst situation for a headset like this, which uh, is not a native PC VR headset but it looks good it's okay it's very very good here with Richard Desam and I'm very excited to test out now the Pico streaming assistant the built-in streaming so what can we get for free here built in I'm very excited for this so stay tuned for the next test now to start the connection via the streaming assistant the built-in you have to start the streaming assistant of course on your PC and on your Pico and then you have this screen here and I can connect now to my PC. Now we are in SteamVR via the Pico Streaming Assistant. This is a little performance overlay here in the Pico Streaming Assistant. The same is available in Virtual Desktop, but I cannot show you as when I record this performance overlay or let's say when I in record internally with the Pico, then the performance of the Pico is at the end. <laughs> so. Uh, the Pico is then uh, not able to stream the game anymore very fluently. So no recording at the high settings here internally. And this is the reason I can show you now the performance overlay of the Pico Streaming Assistant. Now it works. And now we can test if this works to record internally and play at the same time. This is the first time I can judge and see the quality of the Pico Streaming Assistant picture here. Stream from my PC now wirelessly to my Pico 4. And I will spoiler now, this is the same poor quality as it is with the Pico Neo 3 Link, to be honest. We have only 100 megabits per second bitrate and we cannot change it via the app. We have to go to files like the config ini and we have to search for it. There's no no manual, of course, because this is not the way a user should do this. There have to be an option in the software to crank up the bitrate here. But now we have only 100 megabits per second. And this is very poor. Of course, disclaimer, this is a pre-production software. This is uh, like uh, an, an alpha or beta software. It's not the final one yet. And yes, we have to judge it again when it's finally released. But as I've said, it was the same poor quality already with the Pico Neo 3 Link. So I don't, I don't expect that this will get better in two or three weeks, maybe in a few months. I don't know. So what's the render resolution here? Yes, as you can see, I've already cranked up here to 200% as I think this is the correct render resolution plus minus, but this was the standard resolution. And of course, it's the wrong one. I've explained to you why it has to be higher than the internal display resolution. So watch that you have with the Pico Streaming System like this resolution. This is the correct one. So I hope they will fix at least this before they release the final version. So yes, let's start Beat Saber here. And then... We will judge again. Okay. The low bitrate is very much visible here, but unfortunately in a bad way. <laughs> so let's let's test the latency. Maybe this is a good thing. Let's test it. So I have no sound in the headset here. This is also something which does not work currently, but I think this is something they will fix definitely before they launch the final version. Okay, the latency.
latency is good. I mean, the bitrate is not high, so of course the latency is is not bad here. But at at 100 megabits per second, I feel like the latency is not as good as with virtual desktop with 150 megabits per second. Not quite, no. And the picture, it looks for me not very good, to be honest. I mean, you can say this is fine for me. I come from an old wife and um, yes, maybe it's okay for you. But for me, it's not. It's not, I mean, I know now how good Visual Desktop works and looks. So why should I use this? Why should I be happy with this? And I have headsets here and I had headsets here in my home, which cost thousands of dollars and euros. And this is from the past, this picture quality. So nothing Nothing to win any prize out there. <laughs> I'd like to mention right now here while I game, we are not in a relationship in any business relation relationship with Gigador or Witcher Desktop. We just like the app and we just like what he does since the quest, since the Oculus Go. And yes, he's still the king when it comes to wireless. PC VR streaming. So yes, on the 13th of October, you can buy Virtual Desktop for like 20 US dollars, for example, or whatever this will cost in your country. And I can totally suggest this. I will do it. This is a no-brainer. And when you have the Pico 4 or any Pico, any other Pico headset, like the Pico Neo 3 Link, P Virtual Desktop will be available from the 13th of October. Yes, and this is my conclusion. Don't use the Pico Streaming Assistant yet. When there are any changes in quality or settings, we will do another video, of course. But from now, and I would, I would say, even when the headset finally will be released on the 18th of October, Virtual Desktop is ahead, in my opinion. Yes, this was a comparison. Please tell me in the comments what you would say about this comparison and this quality improvement with Richard Desktop here. Please let me know and we will see each other again in the next video. So thank you for watching. Bye.